smartest city, the smartest people, the biggest ideas. Ignatius Loyola is the founder of the Jesuit order and is reputed to have said, give me a child before he is seven and he is mine for life. Our first speaker of this, our second day, uh, arguably has turned that idea on his head. Give me a Jesuit <laughs> and I'll make him a child for life. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Robert Munch is uh, an internationally known uh, child author. Uh, those of you who don't have kids, I'm among them, may not know him all that well, but at 30 million volumes sold, he's right up there in the Pantheon with the Margaret Atwoods and the Jan Martels, and I'm going to invite him up on stage now so you'll understand why. There he is, Robert Munch. So in uh, 1994, I, I get this call from Manitoba saying, I'm the 84, I get this call from Manitoba saying, hey, you've done these kids' books, would you, would you like to do a tour of northern Manitoba? All expenses paid. I said, I said that, that sounds like a really neat idea. So I, I, I get this letter, it lists all the towns, and there's not one Indian community on it. I think that's weird. I, I thought there were like native people in northern Manitoba. So I call back the librarian in Winnipeg and I say, hey, what about this? I thought they were like Indians in Manitoba. Yeah, but they're federal people and we don't do them. So that's like di different people. So I said, like, you, you, but, um, but I'm gonna be up there, you know? And I know there's Indians up there because these reservations have been writing me, so stick me in, like if, there's, if I'm in some town and it's near an Indian community, stick me in the Indian community. Which is how, after I did a talk, a show at the library in La Paz, the second grade teacher came across the bridge from the reserve, picked me up, takes me back, and I'm going to tell a story at the reserve, you know, going to talk to kids there. So I sit down, and there's these chairs, and, I, and first of all, about 30 big guys come in, no kids. I think, hey, this is neat. I never had the adults like me. Wow. They take their chairs and face the back wall. I think, holy shit. <laughs> what happened? Three kids come, three, three kids come. I do the stories for three kids, but I'm in such a panic. I, I, I function well when I'm in a panic, and I make up a new story there that eventually became a book. But, uh, <laughs> but it's all done. The kids go, and the second grade teacher comes up and says, um, I, yeah, I, I really have to explain. Maybe you don't. And three of these big monstrous guys come up and say, we'll tell them. And they take me out, and we get in the, uh, one gets in the front of a pickup truck, and I get in the back of it with two, two of them, and it's a blizzard, and we go back across the river, and we don't turn back towards town, we head north towards the Arctic Circle. And I said, I've, I've seen this in, in gangster movies. <laughs> what happens? And they go up the road, and it starts to snow, and they turn into dirt road, and I should think, holy shit, this really is the gangster movie. We get out, they walk with me into the woods, okay? And I'm thinking, this is where I dig the hole, you know? And one of the guys kneels down and pats the snow and says, right here, right here, 14 years ago is, is where Betty was stabbed 51 times with a screwdriver by somebody from the path, the town that sponsored you, the library that sponsored you. And uh, everybody in town knows who did it, and nobody will talk, and that's why we turned our chairs to the back wall. And he says to me, what do you think about that? Now, I'm thinking, what, what 15 years ago? I'm thinking, these guys must be nuts. I'm thinking they're totally, totally nutshit batsos, you know? And I say, my God, that's horrible. I, but I really think they're crazy because it's like 15 years. Like in Guelph, there's one unsolved murder, murder 15 years, but you know, it's like, that's 15 years ago. And here they're freaking out still. So I play along with them, anything to get out of that woods. Three weeks later, I'm driving in Ontario. The Mounties break the case. They say on the radio, in La Pa, Manitoba, are arrested four people for the screwdriver murder of Betty, uh, what was her last name? Betty, uh, Betty, B Betty Osborne, 15 years ago. This, this, I stop, it's like I got hit in the gut, okay? I, I feel like I spit on this kid's grave. Like, here, they, they're giving it to me. This is what happened, you know? This is what really happened, you know? And I was right there, and I didn't believe him. Damn, damn, I didn't believe him. So I, so I call up Northern Manitoba, I, I call up a library uh, in the, the library in Thompson, and I say, I I'm going to do a free tour of Indian communities in Northern Manitoba, and you please set it up, just airplanes, anything you want, I'll do it. 
So I did. Um, and, I, and I kept doing stuff like that, and things happened. Like um, I, 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 had, I had this book. Uh, I was doing a show in Montreal, and a little kid came and sat in the front row. She had this weird dress on, had ribbons around the shoulders. So when she ran, like there was ribbons going out behind her. It was really neat. So, um, so I, I, I made up a story about it that eventually became a, 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 a book. But uh, I, I didn't know the kid was from the Ganawake Mohawk Reserve across the river, and that a ribbon dress is what you wear when you're a Mohawk and you get dressed up. You get, dre you, 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 you get married in ribbon dresses still, a lot of Mohawks. Anyway, I go visit the family to take pictures and all, and, and um, uh, I stay there for a couple of days. And the mother says, you know, we, we had a lot of trouble here with, with during the Oka thing. Uh, Jillian, Jillian, who's the kid in the book, she said, we, 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 we got trapped here in Ganawake. We couldn't get out. The army was all around. And finally, they say we can get out. And so we go out in this, uh, in this, uh, this convoy. And we get across the river. And we get trapped in this, on the other side by a mob. And the police are standing in lines. And they, the, the mob starts throwing rocks at us. And Jillian almost gets killed because I'm holding her. And a concrete block comes right through the windshield and goes right past the kids and, 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 and cuts and smashes my husband's arm. And, and she says to me, she says to me, that's when I knew I wasn't Canadian. And, and I like this country, just like, what do you say? Oh, no, it's really a nice place. <laughs> um, and, but like, but like, but like so some wonderful things happened. Um, uh, uh, the, the, uh, a lady asked me to come to do a show at uh, the Aquasasne Reserve in Cornwall. And the, these kids there, like when you, when you sign books for Mohawk kids, you're in trouble because they have like 26 letter names. I learned always start way on this side of the book because it's going to go over one page and across. And otherwise, you're doing all kinds of parentheses. One, it's, it's okay to do one hyphen, but like four in the same name, no good. Anyway, she has this little baby, and she, the baby has this long name, and it's like you know, Tiniakate Wate Ta Ta Ta. And I say, what's that mean? And th catch this. this: this is what her baby's name means. Like it's it's a very dark day, and you're walking in the woods, and it's springtime, and there's one white lily, and a ray of sunshine lights that white lily. And how you feel is that name. It's like, wow. <laughs> My name's Bob. Uh, <laughs> as long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. Yeah, that part. You know the part everybody likes? We changed it. <laughs> so I, I, I've been doing this for years and years and years and making a point of visiting native communities. Oh, here, here's, you know. I'm in this fly-in reserve in northern Ontario. And after I'm done telling stories and going out hunting Canada, hunt, Canada geese tastes very good, by the way. <laughs> we are missing it down here. We have reintroduced them, and now they're crapping up all our golf, golf courses, and we won't eat them. We need to hire people from, from northern Ontario. They know what to do with Canada geese when there's too many of them. Anyway, um, three, three, I, so after we're done eating the goose, uh, three kids come to the front. They're the kids about 11 and 12, and they knock on the door. We want to see Bob Bunch. So I come in, and I say, we're going to take you on a tour. I say, oh, what's up? He says, well, uh, we're, we're going to take you down to the cemetery and show all, all, you all our friends who died from suicide drinking. And I, so I said, what's that? He said, you know, you drink till you die. You start drinking, and you drink till you die. And I think, they don't do this in Guelph. Um, these are kids, they're showing me their 14-year-old friends who are dead. From, from starting to drink and drinking till they died. And um, like if Martians came here and said, we have this great stuff, you're gonna like it, but it's gonna kill you 20% 20, 20 of you right away because you're gonna start drinking it. And then it's gonna kill another 40% 40, 40 of you long. Uh, like th that, that's what alcohol is for Indians. Like if, if you're from Italy, like 2,000 years ago, all the people who died from alcohol started dying very slowly and you know, we all forget it. But when you put it into a culture really fast, pow! Lots of people die fast. It's suicide drinking. It's lots of fun. Have a drink. Um, this is why, about two years ago, when the lady from Aquasasne called me up and said, hey, uh, we want to do Mohawk books. Can we do Mohawk books? And what I said was, yes. Now, the reason I said yes was I already had like the first uh, full-color Canadian children's book published in Inuktitut. Eskimo language. But when it went out of print down there, like they don't have it up there, okay? Because they don't produce it locally. So when she said, hey, can we do Love You Forever in Mohawk? I said, yes. And I called up the publisher, says, guess what I just did? 
I, but see, I, I didn't do anything that hurt the publisher because it's Mohawk rights, 20, 23,000 people. There's not going to be a commercial children's book in Mohawk or Ojibwe or Cree or Slavey or any of those languages. There's not going to be a commercial book. The, the, you, have a, you have trouble getting commercial books in Iceland because there's not enough people to, to justify the print run. So I say, do it. Do whatever you want. So. Uh, Three months later, I get, I, get, I get this in the mail. They'd, um, they, they'd done a real back office edition. They'd, they, they'd scanned it not very badly so it was all grainy and, and put it together and stapled it. And in technical terms, you'd say, boy, they really blew it. They loved it. They made it themselves. It became a best hit Mohawk bestseller. They'd burn out one printer and had to buy another. <laughs> they are happy as clams. Um, then they called me up and said, oh, oh, by the way, we put it on CD, too. And I said, oh, you did a, that, that's nice, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, you, and you, you know that part in the book where the mother says, I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. Yeah, that part, you know, the part everybody likes, we changed it. <laughs> it wasn't Mohawk enough, so we stuck in a Mohawk lullaby which I tried to have the Japanese publisher do. They ch then Jap Japan, they changed the pictures. And I said, you gotta put it in a Japanese lullaby. No, sir, we respect your text. <laughs> You're Japanese, you know what goes in there for a lullaby. I don't use mine, but they, they, they did. So the, but the Mohawks were smart. They stuck in a Mohawk lullaby. Um, three weeks ago, I went back because they came out with the, the ribbon story in Mohawk. Same deal, did it in the back room, burn out another printer, um, selling like hotcakes. Uh, and they say, oh, by the way, we did a DVD too. Um, it's selling really well. Sometimes uh, you, you, you got to think outside the box, and and, and 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 wonderful things can happen. See, what, what I'm doing is like foreign aid. I, I give them a key that then they can then generate their own stuff and actually have a little economy, and they're selling it on their own. It's whereas if if I say here's ten million dollars and here's the copy of the book, and we have and and the ten million dollars makes the book. You don't make the book. This way, they made the book, it's, 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 and, and, and they changed the story around, so it becomes a mix, and uh, it's just wonderful. So, but, so, so I was looking at this DVD. Could you run the DVD over there? Yes, techie guy. Yes, yo, tech? Hi, you know tech. Low tech? Oh, no, 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 tech. No, no, as I turned it in there. When you hear the, the rattle, you will turn the page. I start off the Mogalanos and Ovila. The mother is rocking the the baby, the and she is singing. The Creator has sent you, and now it is time for you to live. Thank you that you are living. Little baby, forever I will love you. You must respect yourself. And you must journey a good path. You must respect our mother, the earth. He grew, and he grew, and he grew. He ran in a house, he dirtied the house, and he hollered. And sometimes his mother would say, this little boy is going to drive me crazy. But when it became dark outside and the little boy was sleeping, she would go into his bedroom and she would sing. The Creator has sent you, and now it is time that you should live. Thank you, because you are living. Little baby, forever, I shall love you. You must respect yourself, and you must walk a journey, a good path. You must respect our mother, the earth. He grew, and he grew, and he grew, and he grew, and he grew, he grew until he became nine years old. He doesn't want to come in the house, 
He doesn't want to eat. He doesn't want to bathe. And sometime his mother would say, pretty soon this little boy is going to drive me crazy. But when it became dark outside, his mother would go in to his bedroom and she would sing to him, the Creator has sent you. And now it is time that you should live. Thank you, because you are living. Little baby, I will love you forever. You must respect yourself, and you must walk a beautiful journey, a beautiful path. You must respect our mother, the earth. He grew, he grew, and he grew. He grew until he became a fine-looking man. But his friends looked funny. They dressed funny. Even the songs they listened to was awkward and funny. And sometimes his mother would say, pretty soon this young kid is going to drive me crazy. But when it became night time and he was sleeping, she would go into his bedroom and she would sing to him, The Creator has sent you, and it is time that you should live. Thank you, because you are living. Little baby, forever I shall love you. You must respect yourself and you must walk on journey a good path. You must respect our mother, the earth. He grew, and he grew, and he grew, until he became a man, and then he bought a house, and he moved over there. But sometimes, when it became dark outside, his mother would get in a car, and she would ride over there to his house. By his house, there were stairs, and she would go up there and go into his house, into his bedroom. And she would even pick him up, and she would sing, The Creator sent you. It is time that you should live. Thank you, because you are living. Little baby, forever. I shall love you. You must respect yourself and you must journey a good journey. You must respect our mother, the earth. And so his mother became older and older and older. And her son, she called him, and she said, My son, can you come over? Because I am so sick. So that man, her son, went to see his mother. And when he went in, she began to sing, Creator sent you here. But she couldn't finish. She was too sick. So the man picked his mother up and he sang to her, The Creator sent you. And now it is time for you to rest. Thank you for your life. Mother, forever I shall love you. And when he went back to his house, he kept quiet for quite a while, and he thought about things, and then he went into his daughter's bedroom, and she, he picked her up, 
the Creator sent you. And now it is time that you should have a life. Thank you because you are living. Little baby, forever I shall love you. You must respect yourself and you will journey a beautiful journey or path. You must always respect our mother, the earth. Now. The, the English narrator was reading the Mohawk text and putting it back into English. He wasn't reading my English text. He was translating the Mohawk back, which makes it really different. Now, all I did was say yes two years ago, okay? And it's, the yes wasn't a normal market model, okay? Uh, I, I said, in this case, market forces don't work. You gotta get outside the market forces and put it in, in a foreign aid model. And, it, and, and that happened. That's better than my original story, damn it. Um, <laughs> so uh, it uh, sometimes uh, you, you, you got to think outside the box, and and, and 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 wonderful things can happen. And, and 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 last week I got this call, you know, from an Ojibwe. How come you gave rights to those cigarette smuggling Mohawks? <laughs> Why not? It's working. I bet the Crees are next. Because I'm, I'm giving free, 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 free rights to any native group in Canada that wants to use them. And wow, it works. <laughs> Thanks. Get the latest Idealist news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.ideacityonline.com.